Ming did not mention nobody's name. He would just ask, guys, for what do you want? What is done for such a man? What what honor is should be bestowed? Ming spoke about Mordecai's name. Haman would have made would have wouldn't have made those recommendations. He made those recommendations because he didn't know who the king was talking about. Haman was like Put on the garments, give him the king's horse, let them ride around the city, parade, and say, this is what is done for the man who honors the king. And then the king was like, okay, thank you for that proposal. Now go do what you just told me to Mordecai. Make sure you keep people's, keep people's names out of your mouth. welcome back to my channel my name is Celine Dile aka Sly. if you are new welcome you are welcome Today, message is titled position for promotion it's based out of the book of Esther we always talk about Esther which is all good and well but this time around I saw something about Mordecai there is something to be learned to be observed to be practiced from Mordecai who is Mordecai? Mordecai was linked to the tribe of Benjamin. He was actually related to King Saul. He was part of uh, the son of Kish lineage. So he was related to the King Saul who we meet in 1 Samuel. Who is Mordecai? Mordecai is also the uncle and cousin and now father of Esther. Esther's parents died in the time of exile during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, who we meet in the book of Daniel. So Esther now is without a home. She's without family, obviously where she's from, and Mordecai takes her in. So Mordecai was in the position of taking Esther in because he was the only living parent at the time that if we are, if we read the word that we are aware of that she had to stay with. He was in the position of adopting her because he was the cousin to Esther. So he was in a position to taking her in and grooming her and growing her in. So I'm going to be talking about the position of Mordecai. In each position, there's a purpose. There's a time in our lives when we struggle to understand why we are in a particular position. What is our purpose? Nothing seems to be working. And as we look at the story of Esther, in the beginning, we meet Mordecai. We meet how Mordecai grooms Esther to be the queen, how he guides her, who she needs to speak to, who he needs to couple with. That means Mordecai was in a position to speak life into Esther. Praise God. So Esther was now a queen. She was in the palace with King Astra, who was the king at the time. And she was in the position of influence, in the position of power because she was in there it was easier for Mordecai to speak to her as a daughter as a, as as a cousin because he was in the position to do so if it was anybody else the Queen Esther maybe wouldn't have not listened if it was not her uncle but at the time she was keeping her her her, her um, her Jew lineage secret, okay? She didn't tell anybody because Mordecai told her not to. So he was in the position to tell Esther what to do and what not to do and also to advise her. So that is a little bit about who Mordecai is in the beginning, but now I speak to you in relation to this word, okay? So during this time of uh, reading and just meditating on the book of Esther, I really, 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 really saw Mordecai come to life for me personally. And I know this is also gonna be for somebody else, praise God. So Mordecai was working in the city, in the king's gate, in the palace. We're not told exactly what his profession was, but from what I could observe, he might be was maybe one of the ten attendees, not, no one in particular of influence. He didn't have much power in his position at the time, but he was in the position to hear a lot of things in his position. So if you look at the book of Esther in chapter two, there was a time when two eunuchs, those were the people working with for the king, that were conspiring to kill the king, the king that was married to the queen Esther. And because undetected, unaware, 
Mordecai heard these guys conspiring to kill the king. If he was anybody else, maybe if he was some big shot, they would have seen that somebody around them was next to them and they could have heard them. Because Mordecai was not something of big influence at the time, he was in the position to hear what they were conspiring. Because he was in the position to hear what they were conspiring, he was able to tell Esther, warn the king about these guys, and the investigation confirmed indeed they were trying trying to kill the king, okay? So Mordecai, in his little position, in his hidden place, he was in the position to save the king. Nothing is said about Mordecai being acknowledged, but because of what he heard, the king's life was spared, and those two guys were killed. Praise God. And then we read in chapter 3, following some time after they had just... Um, found out those two people were trying to kill the king. Another person named Haman, who was described as the enemy of the Jews, then adversary later on, who was a commander in chief for the king. That means he was second in command. He was given a promotion, okay? And this guy was commanded to take care of the king's palace and obviously everybody that was around him, everybody looked to him, everybody was supposed to, you know, acknowledge him and so forth. And the king commanded for Haman to be praised. So who is Haman? Haman is from the tribe of Agag. If we look at the book of 1 Samuel, we read that he was actually linked to the, to the, to the guy, um, King Agag, who, Sam, who Saul was supposed to kill but didn't kill. Okay, so as you all know, when you read the books in the Bible, there are historical records that says that that mentions things, events that happened during the time. So it is clear and maybe known to 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 Haman that he didn't that his people did not like the Jews. Okay, we don't know if he has reason, personal reasons. It might be just that it's a generational thing, and we all do not like the Jews. So he hated the Jews more. It, more, more importantly, in this particular chapter, in chapter 3, the king commands for everybody to bow down to Haman. But there was one person who said, I, I, I only bow down to the king of kings, which is the Lord, which is our God, which is our Abba Father. And he just refused to bow down to Haman. But everybody else bow, bow down to Haman. So just imagine every time somebody comes to you, you bow down. You know, why must I bow down to you? You're not my God. So Haman got hysterical he got angry and um he went to the king and told the king that uh, there's this particular group of people who do not want to bow down in, in particular i want for us to draft a decree a law that says that if these people do not bow down to the king they surely will be executed because the king didn't know his uh, reason for such a law, it sounded good to his good to his ears. It was itching to his ears. That's one thing I also made note of because sometimes people who speak towards your ego, like to to what, what what I'm saying is people that speak to fulfill your ego. You know, they they easily can influence a person who has no idea why this person is actually here asking for such a favor. But because they're speaking to your your flesh, they're saying, "Oh, king, they don't want to bow down to you. Oh, king, they don't want to do this to you." Obviously, the king will be like, "Huh? Okay, let's just sign up this decree without actually getting context." So this is when a lot of things happen and things start getting crazy. The Jews are uh, uh, heard hear that they are about to be killed across all the 127 provinces in the land of Media and Persia where this king was reigning. So obviously this was a time of despair, it was a time of sadness because this was a time where an entire nationality was going to be erased because of one man's ego and need for power to be acknowledged and which Mordecai clearly indicated that he was not going to bow down to him. Unbeknown that the reason for this decree was because of Haman, Mordecai was also obviously mourning the fact that this decree has gone out to the land and everybody was about to be killed because of one man's ego. But guess what? Mordecai was in position to tell Queen Esther that this decree has been sent out and she needs to stop. So he was mourning. He had sackcloth. It says in the book of chapter 3 that he was mourning. He had sackcloth. I mean, in chapter 4, and those days when people were mourning and were fasting, they would show that they were mourning and fasting by highlighting how much they were in despair for whatever reason, right? So 
So Mordecai was in despair and Esther asked one of her, her, her personal assistants, if we may say, please go and check what's wrong with Mordecai. Why is he crying like this? Why is he out of this world? Like what's going on with him? And then the, the guy goes and checks uh, to checks Mordecai and asks Mordecai, why are you crying? Like what's your problem? And then that's when Esther finds out that there's a decree that has been sent out to kill the Jews. And then when she hears that, she goes and tells the attendants, please give Mordecai these clothes so he can dress up. Mordecai says, no, I do not want your clothes. I want you to go tell the king to stop this decree right now he was in a position to tell esther what to do because esther was still his family member she was still her, her daughter because she, he had adopted her so he can tell esther what to do and esther still had reverence and respect for her uncle now stepfather mordecai so she said oh no you can't just go to the king if you go to the king at the king summoning you you will be killed and then if now there's a famous scripture here that's going to come out of my mouth and then Mordecai goes back to Esther and tells Esther listen here deliverance for the Jews will come at a certain time even if it does not come through to you it will come okay that means ladies and gentlemen that God will do his perfect will regardless of your obedience even if Esther said nope I ain't doing this I'm the queen I got it all going on I don't need to be worried about people dying if that was the case deliverance was for the Jews was going to come through somebody else even if Esther said no so Esther then said mm, you know and then I mean Mordecai said this is maybe the reason why you are there maybe this is the reason you were made queen for such a time as this and then she says I will go and then she issues a fast for three days and tells everybody to fast in the land of Sus including Mordecai and everybody else her attendees to fast for three days and then after three days she will go to the king and if she perishes she perishes so ladies and gentlemen I've been speaking about Mordecai being in the position to hear being in the position to tell Esther what to do and what not to do being in a position to 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 mourn the people of the of the Jews being in the position Position to be somebody who was in the background nobody could see who he was but he was actually in the position to have such influence with the Queen Esther herself so obviously following that a lot of things happened one of my favorite scriptures which I'm, which I'm gonna read for you I'm really going at the first place but I pray that you receive the revelation what I'm trying to speak to you right now the Holy Spirit says that you are positioned for promotion even when it doesn't look like it even when you do not look like the type of person that the world will see as a person to be promoted in the book of first samuel we see samuel going to the house of jesse to go find israel's new king and a lot of the sons of jesse looked appealing they looked like the kind of people that could be king but god says man looks at the outer appearance but i look at the heart so mordecai was in was hidden at this point nobody knew who mordecai was nobody knew that and a lot of the sons of Jesse looked appealing they looked like the kind of people that could be king but God says man looks at the outer appearance but I look at the heart so Mordecai was in was hidden at this point nobody knew who Mordecai was nobody knew that Mordecai was a stepfather to Esther nobody knew that Mordecai was the person who could hear things and tell Esther what to do to help the king he didn't look the part he was he was ridiculed you know he was just the guy who used to work behind the scenes and nobody could identify him even when the king uh, was saved in chapter in chapter 2 he wasn't acknowledged because he was just Mordecai praise God in chapter 4 in chapter 5 I mean we then see how the Queen Esther approaches the king so she she approaches the king just to fast track this she approaches the king three times for a bouquet to a dinner with him and Haman and for a um, a, um, a time with both of them so the first time she asked the king if it's your if it if it if it favors the king you know she is so strategic please read the book of Esther 
take notes of how she says things and how she handles herself you would think the first time she would blankly say guy this guy is trying to kill my people she takes her time it took her twice to actually finally say the third time that hey this man is trying to kill us that is the favor that i want so this is after she had fasted and prayed and the king actually held out his her gold scepter which is an indication of that she is welcome to come into the inner courts and because she was welcome that was favor because in those days if the king didn't call for you if i didn't send for you i'm gonna kill you but the king did not kill esther he welcomed in she walked he she, he welcomed in in the inner courts and then the king started asking esther what do you want what can i do for you i will even give you half of the kingdom i'm like okay that is called the providence of god in the book of uh, the commentary of daughters of 27 he said the providence of god is when things don't make sense and you start getting favored for things that you are not to be favored with because it's the providence of god praise god and then esther says if it may be that i may have dinner for Haman and the king and then the king says yeah sure and then Haman comes in and they're all hunker dory Haman feels accomplished he is boosting his ego and he goes back home and he says I just had I just had dinner with the king and the queen and I'm just feeling all good but on my way out I saw this person called Mordecai who still does not want to bow down to me okay so Haman in his anger conspires with his wife and his friends to actually kill Mordecai because still Mordecai chapter 5 sees uh, him Haman going inside the, 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 the dinner and comes out and he still looks at him like I ain't bound down to you and Haman then gets so angry from being so happy after the dinner to being so angry ladies and gentlemen another revelation it's so crazy how people who have everything going for themselves will still get irritated by people who have nothing you know there's a there's a there's a trend on social media that says people will normally get irritated by people that people that don't like you irritated by your light okay because you reveal to them that you you reveal to them about their demon Mordecai didn't have much, but Haman still was controlled in his anger because Mordecai did not want to bow out to him. Okay, so now I'm gonna fast track this a bit quicker. So anyway, a lot of things happened. Chapter six, second second time when the dinner was about to happen. But in chapter six, the king has a dream. Well, he's unable to sleep. And then he asked one of his attendees to please read him the historical records. So we are assuming as per the commentary that maybe he needed a story tell. He needed a storybook so he can fall asleep. And in the attendees reading the book, the attendees mentioned the time when the king was saved and uh, a man saved him after the two eunuchs were trying to kill him. And then the king was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did we do for that man? Was anything done to honor that man? And then the attendees were like, no, nothing was done. People, the Lord will bring you into the remembrance of kings and queens. People remember what you have done five years ago, two years ago, a month ago. People will start thinking about you out of the blue to favor you. So the king then asked the attendees, what can be done for a man who has just honored the king? <laughs> and then Haman, in his quest to ask the king to kill Haman, the king asked him, dude, so what do you think should be done for a man who has honored the king? And then Haman says, um, well, in his mind he thinks, oh, what, who else would you want to honor besides me? Oh, the ego. And then Haman starts saying in chapter 6 and verse 7, who is it the king? Okay, he says in, in chapter 6, Haman thought to himself, who is it the king would want to honor more than me? Haman told the king, well, for the man the king wants to honor, for the man the king wants to honor, have them bring a royal garment, praise God, that the king himself has worn and a horse the king himself has ridden, which has a royal crown on his head. Put the garment on the horse under the charge of one of the king's most noble officials. Have them clothe the man the king wants to honor. <laughs> Parade him on the horse through, through the city square and proclaim before him, this is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. Verse 10, the king told Haman, 
Hurry and do just as you have proposed. Take a garment and a horse for Mordecai the Jew, who is sitting at the city gates. Do not leave out any of the things that you have proposed. So Haman took the garment and the horse he clothed, for, clothed Mordecai and paraded him through the city square, crying out before him, this is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. Verse 12, then Mordecai returned before him, this is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. Verse 12, then Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman hurried off from home, for home, mournful with his head covered. Haman told his wife what had happened, and his wife was like, listen, since Mordecai is Jewish, and you have begun to fall before him, you won't overcome him, okay? The same people who told him, this is what you need to do to get rid of him, and we're not telling him that, listen, Mordecai is way above you, above you now. While they were still speaking with him, the king Enix arrived and rushed him into the bouquet that the queen Esther had prepared. So, in the book of Genesis, we hear of jo Joseph and his brothers. When Joseph says, what you meant for evil, God has meant it for my good. So this is an example of what the enemy has meant for evil. In the case of Mordecai, it has become for his good. He went from being sidelined, not being mentioned, not being acknowledged, from weeping with sackcloths and not being the famous guy to being the guy that was paraded across the city gates, wearing garments with the king's horses, the same guy that hated him was responsible for advising and proposing what should a person that has honored the king should get. What I'm trying to say in this particular message, people, is that it may not look like you are favored. It may not look like you are in position for promotion. But God does not look at what man sees. Man sees... Uh, a, um, what you call this man looks at the outside man looks at who you connected to how you speak who you know how your mannerism does it click with the masses how you show up but god looks at the heart mordecai was in the position to be where he was and yet be humble and god was starting to turn his life around because as we read further the third time when they had the dinner Queen Esther was now ready to tell the king that this guy, this guy, the commander in chief of yours is trying to kill me and kill my people. And Haman, the same gallow that he had prepared in chapter five for the Mordecai was the same gallow that he was put on, that same gallow that he was killed, the same gallow that his sons and the people who hated the Jews were killed as well. So guys, what I'm trying to say in this message for you today is that carry on living for the people of God. Carry on living for carry on living for Christ. Carry on doing the things that the Lord has put into your heart. Do not change your mannerism, your nature. Do not bow down to anybody except for God. Bow down to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mordecai could have easily told the king that that was the guy that helped you, but you never gave me anything. But he carried on living his life. He could have easily told Haman that, um, look at you now. You are the one that's giving me this. But he was like, okay, that's what, you know, we, we are not told what he, how he reacted when he saw Haman uh, giving him all these beautiful things. But he was in the position of being humble to being exalted. Humble and exalted at the same time. Because even after he got his promotion, even after Esther was given Haman's land, given Haman's house, he, she was able to give um, Mordecai the house as well. Uh, Mordecai was promoted. He was second in charge. I'm fast tracking now. But a lot of things were turned around. The law that was put out to kill the Jews was revoked in the mighty name of Jesus. I am saying right now, this is the season where a lot of things that were meant to hurt the children of God, the laws are being revoked and they are being nullified in the mighty name of Jesus. So I hope that you see in the book and the story of Esther that Mordecai was the archetype of, 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 you know, of God, basically. Jesus came as a humble servant, you know. 
I might be maybe mixing up my, my view of Mordecai. But Mordecai is a great example of humility. He's a great example of, you know, keeping, 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 keeping the main thing, the main thing, serving your God, minding your own business, doing the right things and caring for God's people. Mordecai had a heart for the Jews. He mourned for the Jews. Uh, he had a heart for God. He didn't bow down. He was also very caring. He took in his cousin, now his daughter, to take care of her after her parents were killed during the King, Nebuch King Nebuchadnezzar's reign. And all was well with him, and he didn't want anything. He still worked with this. He still worked at the king's gate behind the scenes, and he was he was he was fortunate to hear that um, the king was going to have a parade for a new wife, and his, he proposed his sister, I mean his daughter or well, his cousin now daughter, to be the queen because she knew that she had natural beauty, and she knew she would be able to be there to help the Jews in some certain point in time. So I want to say this: three days. Three days it took for the for for the Jews to receive their inheritance. Three days for them to receive their 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 lives back when they were killed. It took two people. It took it took Esther, and it took most of all Mordecai. Mordecai was in the position to advise Esther. Mordecai, I can honestly say, he's a type of holy. He's a Holy Spirit. He's the one that uh, tells you, no, you know, mind your best. No, do this this way. No, don't think just because you're there, you are there because of anything else. You are there to deliver your people. And Esther is the archetype of Christ. You know, three days. Jesus rose after three days. So if we look at the book of Esther, God is not mentioned, but God's hand is in everything. And I want to pray for someone today and just hope this message really ministers to you and speaks life to you that you do not need to be a Haman. You do not need to uh, show, up, show, show, show off your, your, your wealth, your money, your possessions because of your high statue. You do not need to do that. Carry on work, working as if you are working for the Lord. Speak up when you need to speak up. Keep quiet when you need to keep quiet because Mordecai knew how to keep quiet and he also knew how to speak up. Okay, so I would totally want people to read this book, the book of Esther. Look at it in a different light. Read it, study it, not just read it. Read it in, 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 in expectation of meeting with God as you read it. And the Lord will speak to you. You are positioned for promotion, but it's not. it doesn't look like any normal positioning. It, it looks totally the opposite. You don't have uh, the people in the background talking, uh, like elevating you. You don't have biases, people only recommending you because you are based on some kind of, um, you know, personality that the masses have. You look nothing like where you're going to. Hey, I mean, Mordecai looked nothing like the man he became towards the end of the book of Esther. In chapter 10, he was the second in command. He had riches and he was able to also bless his people as well. So this was the revelation that I wanted to share today. And I pray that you are ready to be positioned for promotion. Put on your garments, put on your bright clothes, speak loud, say what says the Lord about a, ask the Lord what says the Lord about a matter, and the Lord will honor you all the ways. Praise God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for whoever is watching this video right now to know that they are positioned for promotion. It is God's glory that we are positioned like nothing of this world. We may not look like what the world is looking for, but the man of God, the God who sits on high, the Son of Man, Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit looks at the inner parts, just as it was for David, just as it was for Mordecai, it is, is for him or her or for myself. I pray that they continue to walk in the manner in which the Holy Spirit has guided them, has yielded them, and they do not get discouraged for the God if things are going the opposite of what they had envisioned. It is all for the glory of God at the end of the day, for the Lord's favor to be reigned in his kingdom forevermore. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I pray and I ask that you spring forth the people to be persistent, to not give up, to be persi to be persistent and resilient for the God, to speak when it needs, when they need to speak, to be silent when they need to be silent. In the mighty, wondrous name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You are positioned for promotion. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if this is something that speaks to you. Let me know if you've ever received a similar revelation. Let us talk on the comments. 
and don't forget to, to subscribe like and share bye